Positive Spin, presenting positive, innovative, and solution-oriented news from around the world. On today's show, we profile environmental activist Sofia Gartica of Argentina, recipient of the 2012 Goldman Environmental Prize, for her successful campaign to halt Monsanto's toxic spraying in her country. And we'll see a music video of the song Hemp from the Luminaries, LA's most conscious hip hop band. Then we'll experience the original paintings of well-known Northern California artist, Jack Wright. Finally, we'll learn how Medicine for Humanity's vitally important work in Uganda is saving the lives of women and children. In our first segment, we profile the important environmental work of Sofia Gatica of Argentina, recipient of the 2012 Goldman Environmental Prize for her courageous actions which halted Monsanto's indiscriminate spraying of chemicals in her community and throughout Argentina. Here in Ituzaingo, we used to have farms and cows and fruit trees, but they destroyed all that and planted genetically modified soybeans. Now, when they spray the soy, they also spray us. Argentina is the third largest exporter of soy products in the world. It drives the country's economic boom. Each year, Argentinian soy farmers use over 5 million gallons of Monsanto's Roundup, a highly toxic weed killer. For me, these soybeans mean only destruction and death. At first, I didn't associate my daughter's illness with pesticide spraying. She was three days old when her kidneys failed. I felt horrible. It's very difficult for and it was very hard on me. It's difficult for me to talk about losing my daughter. I could not accept the reasons for my daughter's death. That's when I decided to go door to door. Sofia organized other concerned mothers to create a map of all the illnesses in their neighborhood. Their homegrown study revealed that the community's cancer rate was 41 times the national average. What happened in Ituzaingo is a hidden genocide because they poison you slowly and silently. With the study confirming their worst fears, the mothers launched a stop spraying campaign, leading demonstrations and educating the public about the dangers of agrochemicals. I started receiving phone calls threatening to kill my children. Then a man put a gun to my head and told me to stop messing with the soy. But I wasn't going to let them stop me. After 10 years, Sofia's perseverance paid off when President Fernandez ordered the Ministry of Health to investigate the impact of pesticide use in Ituzango. Our study found birth defects in animal embryos exposed to low concentrations of glyphosate, a key ingredient in Roundup. By protesting, we got the laws changed in Ituzaingo. Now they cannot legally spray within 2,500 meters of our homes. Our ultimate goal is to eliminate aerial fumigation throughout Argentina. We have filed a lawsuit and we are seeking justice. If we have to throw away the laws and kick in the doors of the federal courts, we will. For outstanding environmental achievement in South and Central America, the 2012 Goldman Environmental Prize is awarded to Sofia Gatica Cordoba, Argentina. And now, a song from the Luminaries, LA's most conscious hip-hop band. The song is entitled Hemp, and it talks about the value and the many practical uses of this renewable resource. Declaration. 
kids was made on hemp paper. Hemp paper. Thomas Jefferson at hemp fields. Let me tell you what the things organically grown hemp yields. Jack Herron try to tell us the news. We can even use the seeds to improve our food. Build homes in the future made straight from hemp. No heat bill costs, so we save all rent. Free will in the mix. Hemp shirt, hemp kicks. Keep my gear earth conscious. Let's go down the list. Its fibers are the strongest. Products last the longest. Change our whole infrastructure. Hemp will never wrong us. Obviously, it's the plant that can raise our whole economy. If we open our minds to see. Build your house insulated organically. That's real talk, homie. That's no fantasy. Where the see we got a world to feed. Grow hemp everywhere, all the food you could ever need. Oil, fiber, medicine, and paper. Banning cannabis was the world's biggest caper. Strong, durable, long last, and natural. Renewable botanical, growing every annual. Hemp can take the planet, all you gotta do is plant it. Wanna see it growing up from the cracks in the granite. Feed the children. Take it back, back, back to 10 GBC. World oldest relic camp crawl from the Chinese. Over 50,000 uses, you see, like the fuel and steel that made Henry Ford's Model T. Greeks, Phoenicians, high priests and priestesses from Asia to America. Hemp sales the high seas. Billion dollar cash crop, can't stop, won't stop. Flip the greenhouse effect, the atmosphere is hot. I had shirt pants all made from hemp. Even the shoes on my feet staying eco fresh. Raw food be the movement, I eat the seeds. Great source of protein and omega 3. It's the most nutritious, plus so delicious. Put it in my body mixer in my green smoothie. We was given every seed, bearing plant and earth. Genesis 1, 2, 9, check the verse. Grow a true field of dreams, tall and green. This one crop can be used for everything. Hemp milk, have a sip, taste buds, feel the bliss. Get a hemp notepad, take no soreness. Regenerate the earth, create new work. Build your karma points and your network. Freely I support him, listen for the growth. Keep it cool like Dr. Ronald's peppermint soap. Imagine a world we could live in Plant these seeds in the minds of our children Plant these trees and grow a solution Hemp can heal the world In our next segment, we'll view the work of Jack Wright, a remarkable painter from Northern California. He was a member of a small group of painters called the Lucid Foundation that shared ideas and common passion for bringing their inner scapes, dream images, and visions to both canvas and watercolor. And he himself was truly a master colorist. Jack Wright traveled the world and absorbed art and culture from pre-Columbian to Impressionist to Aboriginal to even Kitsch. In the following segment, we'll see portions of the film, Dragons on the Ridge, made by Ted Wright, one of his four sons. The entire half-hour film can be seen on both Vimeo and YouTube. And more paintings can be seen online at Weinstein Gallery forward slash Jack Wright. A website devoted to his work is presently in development. <laughs>
to blame. Yeah. To blame. Like a chameleon, you might say. Medicine for Humanity, founded by Dr. Leo Lagasse, is a nonprofit medical care and teaching organization dedicated to improving the health of women in underserved populations worldwide. Since 1995, Medicine for Humanity has taken highly trained teams of volunteer doctors and resident physicians to Africa, Asia, North and South America, providing critically needed clinical care to women and infants, along with on site surgical training for local medical personnel. Currently focused in Uganda, Africa, Medicine for Humanity is assisting the development of sustainable programs for prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of maternal birth injuries, lowering death rates and incidence of women's cancers. The ultimate goal is to create a model of medical education that can be replicated in hospitals and clinics in other countries worldwide. I would say coming to Africa makes you want to come again. I would say coming to Africa makes you want to come again. The world we know but we don't realize is getting smaller and smaller. We feel very happy when doctors come to share their experience with us. As women's health goes in a country, so goes the nation. Medicine for Humanity is an international medical care and teaching organization aimed at improving the health of women all around the world. We have teams that travel to underdeveloped countries where the need is truly great. And as we travel, we have learned that if we simply go there occasionally, we may not have made as much impact as if we can focus on education as well. To advance the goal of educating medical personnel in underserved regions, Medicine for Humanity has forged a unique partnership with the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA. Dr. Gautam Chaudhry, chair of the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology, initiated a credentialed rotation so that OBGYN residents can travel with Medicine for Humanity as part of their residency training. 
what do we give them for There's no question, you know, the residents just love it. When our junior doctors who were in training went there, they appreciated the problem much more. They knew the needs, they knew how lucky they were. They knew that, my God, we can't waste things because the third world country doesn't have these things. So they've become much more aware. And I think it's a, really given them a different perspective. I think the UCLA residents are incredibly privileged to have the opportunity to come to Eritrea and not only um, improve their surgical skills, but also have cross-cultural interactions with uh, both the nursing and the physicians who practice here. Our department, uh, the Department of OBGYN, sends residents and attendings here to teach not only the medical students in lecture format, but also to teach the doctors here newer techniques, um, more complicated surgeries. And then for the residents, it's a great surgical experience. As the program evolves and the medical students start to get clinical training, um, it'll be very good for us to be here and be able to, to teach the medical students some more clinical aspects of medicine. Okay, and then put that Medicine for Humanity's dedicated and diverse group of volunteer physicians has helped countless courageous women across many borders since 1995. I think awareness is a very important aspect of this, to know what is uh, women's health care like um, in Uganda, what, uh, what is on ground, what are the milestones, how far they come, what are their challenges, where are they doing well, where can they be helped. The women are seemingly at the forefront because of the virtue of the fact that they are women, they're going to give birth to children, so they'll be the first people to need health care when they're coming to give birth. Because uh, maternal health and infant health are the markers of the quality of health care. Uh, for example, we, we, we've, had, we've had a surgical camp, I mean we've had this collaboration with Master and UCLA and you have come and you've seen what's on ground. Uh, sometimes if, uh, if we live here and no external force comes in, you sort of like, you get immune, you, you, you get to know your situation and you just live with it. But uh, getting other people coming in yeah, and so you know, like now the way you came in with a camp, I think that really helps. There is a lot of exchange of ideas and thoughts about how we can move forward as a group because I think for both of us, the Emberara University and UCLA, we both have the common goal of improving the lives of patients. It's very interesting because we get to see so many different techniques, like surgical techniques and the approach. Because like you, you, bring in, you bring in doctors from the world where they have lots of things to use, and then we come in a world where we have like less things to use. So we know we interact it's very good. And Dr. Amy always jokes with me, you know, Billy, you have to hold this, it's like, you have to do it. but this is very good because you can learn the wrong way. And I think that's what we need most. If you equip me with the, with the knowledge and the skills, then you have equipped me with everything. Prostate gland and switch initiate labor. Are we together? Medicine for Humanity plans to maximize the resources available in this 21st century to launch a series of internet-based distance learning programs aimed at offering up-to-date medical training and education to doctors and nurses in underserved countries. Certainly we have some of the most promising partnerships that one could ever desire. Certainly we have the acceptance in the developing countries. And we think we've got a vision for the future. The vision is not to build new buildings or to keep sidewalks clean. It is to create new education. Well, that's our show for today. We hope this program has inspired you to take action in your local community to create a better world. I'm Bill McCarthy, and I want to remind you that everyone can make a difference. Go out and make some positive news.